on World News Tonight. Unprecedented protests. Violent clashes with police took place in China with demonstrations only getting bigger. Nuclear threats. North Korea is aiming for the pinnacle of nuclear weaponry with Kim Jong-un at the helm of the operation. Lethal landslides. Italy reels from the impact of a devastating landslide burying countless victims. The search for the survivors continue. And it's a Christmas market. Surrounded by a medieval setting, the market in Tallinn extracts many around the globe. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News tonight. And we start off with the unprecedented protests taking place in China. Chinese leader Xi Jinping faced unprecedented dissent after thousands of demonstrators protested in cities across China over the weekend against his zero COVID strategy, with some daring to openly call for his removal in the streets. Anti government slogans that were once whispered now shouted in the streets of Shanghai. Protesters in China's largest city crying down with the Chinese Communist Party and down with Xi Jinping. Those chants a red line in a nation where political protest is not tolerated. We need to be brave, this man says. Am I a criminal for holding a flower? Dragged away by police, but unclear if arrests alone can stop simmering anger from nearly three years of harsh COVID lockdowns boiling into something bigger. Protests this week in cities across the country. And in the capital, students at this elite Beijing university turning blank pieces of paper into a symbol of resistance, calling for democratic rule of law and freedom of speech. Experts say some of their demands have echoes of the 1989 protests in Tiananmen Square. Two weeks after his first face-to-face -face meeting with President Biden, Xi Jinping now facing a crisis at home. The question, how will he respond? Xi had tried easing his zero COVID rules to help the economy. But with cases now at a record high, local authorities have tightened restrictions once again. Protesters blaming those restrictions for stopping fire crews reaching this blaze. People who have lived through what feels like a never-ending lockdown now taking their anger to the streets. Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen has resigned as the leader of the island's ruling Democratic Progressive Party after her party suffered heavy losses in midterm elections. Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen resigned as head of the ruling Democratic Progressive Party on Saturday following local election losses. Tsai had tried to frame the elections as more than just a local vote, saying the world is watching how Taiwan defends its democracy amid tensions with China, which claims the island as its territory. But her strategy failed to win public support, and at a press conference, Tsai took responsibility for the losses. We were unable to break through the current makeup of local politics. This shows that we have not met expectations of the people when it comes to running municipalities. The local elections for mayors, county chiefs and local councillors are typically about domestic issues like health crisis restrictions and crime. The main opposition party, the Kuomintang or KMT, was leading or claimed victory in 13 of the 21 city mayor and county chief seats up for grabs, including the capital Taipei. The KMT has accused Tsai and the DPP of being overly confrontational with China. It's not like the DPP has never failed or fallen before. We will conduct thorough reviews. The more the people expect from us, the better we have to perform. Focus will now turn to the 2024 presidential and parliament election, which Tsai and the DPP won by a landslide in 2020 on a pledge to stand up to China and defend Taiwan's freedoms. Tsai, who will continue serving as president until 2024, cannot run again because of term limits. Former U.S. President Donald Trump is facing more backlash, including from members of his own party. They are criticizing the current 2024 Republican presidential candidate for dining with controversial musician Kanye West, along with a well-known white supremacist. 
Tonight, another reckoning for the Republican Party after former President Donald Trump dined with a white supremacist at his Mar-a-Lago club. Trump is really impressed with Nick Fuentes. Rapper Kanye West brought Fuentes, a neo-Nazi, to dinner with Trump, who says he didn't know him. In the aftermath, silence from GOP leadership. The loudest condemnations coming from those Republicans likeliest to challenge Trump in 2024. I hope someday we won't have to be responding to what uh, uh, former President Trump has said or done. In this instance, it's important to respond. It's very troubling. Former Trump ally Chris Christie calling it another example of Trump's awful lack of judgment. It comes as Republicans ready to take control of the House and ramp up oversight, among them COVID-19 funding and the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. The veterans deserve this first and foremost. Plus more controversial topics like Hunter Biden's laptop. But while the GOP game plan is set, who will lead the charge is not. Let's get America back on track. Top Republican Kevin McCarthy working to win the 218 votes he needs to become House Speaker. A handful of Republicans vowing they'll never vote for McCarthy toughens his task. And yet... The fact is, what's the alternative here? I do think he will get the votes to 18 on January 3rd. But even as Washington looks ahead to 2023, one key 2022 race left to run. Georgia voters flocking to the polls this weekend in that marquee Senate runoff. More than 90,000 voted already, rivaling November's midterm early voting numbers. A win here still essential, even though Democrats will already keep control of the Senate. Still in the U.S., just as Thanksgiving has ended, millions of Americans are struggling to drive or fly back home in time for work. There were long lines of passengers in airports all across the U.S. as over 4,600 flights were delayed due to bad weather. When considering the big picture, the weather could have been much worse, but fortunately, only rain and wind have been the cause of the delay. From crowded roadways to runways, the big holiday exodus is testing some 55 million travelers' patients nationwide. A stunning 16-mile backup seen in Nevada, and not much relief for those flying. Lines snaked through airports in Austin, Orlando, Oakland, and Philadelphia, as staffers tried to keep the mood merry. More than 2.5 million passengers anticipated to take flight on what could be the busiest travel day of the year. While an improvement from the summer's airport Armageddon, today several thousand flights were delayed and dozens more canceled. And with fewer planes in the sky, experts warn it's difficult to rebook. Just hours in advance, Cazette Turvold learned her flight home to Colorado had been canceled. The travel rush playing out just as bad weather moved in prompting a ground stop in Newark and delays at other major hubs. The same system that pummeled the Southern Plains and spun up a tornado in Louisiana today swept northward with a wall of rain and wind gusts topping 50 miles an hour. Meanwhile, across the country, families are grappling with a different challenge. Strong winds and snow closing out the holiday weekend in the northwest. We got over right as the snow was starting and uh, thankfully it wasn't freezing yet as the return home brings a return of travel headaches. Over in the war in Ukraine, Ukraine continues to struggle to sustain critical energy infrastructure following yet more strikes from Russia. However, the region's nuclear watchdog predicts that Russian forces may be retreating from occupied territory. Utility crews scrambled to restore power, water and heating in Ukraine. According to electricity producers, they're now supplying 80% of power against a backdrop of freezing temperatures. It's despite the onslaught of further Russian strikes in eastern and southern regions on Sunday. In his nightly address, President Vladimir Zelensky said that Ukraine's unity is a sign of its strength. He said that together and helping each other, we will pass this challenge of war as well. This winter, this Russia's attempt to use the cold against people. Meanwhile, the Belgian Prime Minister visited Bucha and Borodyanka. Alexander de Cru had a look at the largest mass grave discovered in Ukraine, with more than 450 bodies. In Borodyanka, more than a thousand buildings were destroyed. But despite everything that's happened, around 80% of the inhabitants have returned here. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news.
Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now, a little over a week after the inspection of the ICBM launch, appearing for the first time with his daughter, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has ordered engineers and officials to continue working to strengthen the regime's nuclear capabilities at a rapid pace. To those who contributed to the launch, Kim gave promotions and said that North Korea's goal is to build the world's strongest nuclear deterrent. This is a photo of Kim Jong-un and his daughter Kim Joo-hye, his second child, posing for a photo with those who were involved in the regime's recent intercontinental ballistic missile launch. The photo was released Sunday morning by the North state-run Korean Central News Agency, which said these were the people who contributed to what it called a successful launch of a Hwasong-17 missile. Kim attended the launch on Friday, November 18th, with his daughter, and pledged to counter what he referred to as U.S. nuclear threats with the regime's own nuclear weapons. State media also reported Sunday that Kim said he expects the scientists, engineers and military officers to continue to expand and strengthen North Korea's nuclear deterrent at an extraordinarily rapid pace. Kim reportedly called the Hwasong-17 missile the world's strongest strategic weapon and promoted military officers involved in the test launch, telling them that the ultimate goal is to possess the world's strongest strategic force. He also said the purpose of the North's nuclear arsenal is to protect the dignity and sovereignty of its people. North Korea has carried out a record number of missile launches this year, and South Korean and U.S. officials have been saying that the North appears to have completed preparations for its first nuclear test in five years. This week, on November 29th, the North will observe the fifth anniversary of what it regards as the completion of its nuclear force, so there's a chance a nuclear test could come in a matter of days. A woman was found dead and around 10 people were still missing on the southern Italian holiday island of Ischia after a landslide engulfed buildings during heavy rain. Rescuers continue to search for the missing with the aid of rescue dogs and helicopters. Divers comb the waters off the coast of Ischia. As helicopters fly over the island, several people are still missing after a massive landslide swept down the mountainside towards the port of Casamichela on Saturday morning, collapsing buildings, sweeping vehicles out to sea and upturning trees. Firefighters say the mud is around six metres deep in places. On Saturday, this man, covered in mud and clinging to his gate, was saved by emergency workers. Rescue efforts were hampered by rain and high winds, which also delayed ferries bringing reinforcement from the mainland. Residents have been advised to stay in their homes. The landslide was triggered by the heaviest rain the island has seen in two decades. Experts said the disaster was exacerbated by construction in high-risk areas. Over 160 people have been left homeless. While the initial outlook was grim for Musk's Twitter takeover saga, it seems that things are finally turning around as Musk claims Twitter signups and interactions has been at an all-time high. This comes following accusations of Nazism by actress Alisa Milano, which were promptly shut down as baseless. Elon Musk is saying that Twitter's new user signups are at an all-time high as he continues to struggle with the site's mass exodus of advertisers and users fleeing to other platforms over concerns of verification and hate speech. In posts to his own Twitter account, the chief executive said signups had averaged over 2 million per day in the seven days to November 16th, up 66% compared to the same week a year ago. He also said the site could have over a billion monthly users in 12 to 18 months. Hate speech impressions decreased as of November 13th compared to October 2021, he says. And active user minutes, the amount of time people interact with Twitter, were also at a record high. Musk has previously said that Twitter is experiencing a mass drop in revenue from the advertiser pullouts, which he blames on activist groups. Hundreds of employees are also believed to have quit, in addition to his laying off half of the company in November. Musk's latest comments come days after the company announced the impending rollout of verified gold and grey check marks for governments and companies. There was a major breakthrough as the government of Nicolas Maduro and the Venezuelan opposition broke a political stalemate with a broad social accord. The U.S. government responded by allowing a major U.S. oil company to resume operations in Venezuela. After months of negotiations, the Venezuelan government of Nicolas Maduro and its opposition have signed an agreement. 
A historic breakthrough in the Venezuela talks which may finally ease the country's economic and political crisis. With a lot of hope and force, we now move to the agenda that will create the conditions to carry on guaranteed free elections to Venezuelans. Throughout the negotiations, we will also seek to respect political and human rights. The accord allows for a trust fund of frozen assets belonging to Maduro's government to be used to finance social projects within the country. We want to announce that through this agreement, we are rescuing over $3 billion that will directly fund education, health care, power, aid to the tragic floods victims that have suffered in Venezuela. A relief for the president, whose country has been under US and EU sanctions since 2018. Maduro took to Twitter saying the accord will open up a new chapter for Venezuela. But neither the government nor the opposition will manage the unfrozen assets. Instead, they will be overseen by the United Nations. Washington responded by allowing oil company Chevron to resume operations in Venezuela. Their operating license will last six months until Maduro's government shows that they meet the commitments of the accord. Supporters of Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador flocked to the capital to rally alongside him and mark his fourth year in office. As the president shook off his critics' concerns that his major political reform plan sets the stage for a power grab. Tens of thousands of people packed out the streets of Mexico City on Sunday in a massive show of support for President Andres Manuel López Obrador. The crowd came from near and far after pushback to the president's political agenda in recent weeks, including a protest march of similar size against him. Critics fear his ideas for electoral reform could lead to a grab for power. He says they would improve democracy. But Sunday was a big show of popularity for López Obrador, with some marching alongside him toward the capital Zocalo Square. At the square, the president, locally known by his initials AMLO, refuted critics' concerns. Effective franchise and effective democracy, AMLO told his supporters. Re-election? No. Among the reforms, the budget of the country's electoral commission would be slashed, along with the number of seats in a part of Congress. Congress began discussing the reform proposal earlier this month. AMLO says it aims to limit economic influence in politics but his opponents fear it would concentrate power in the hands of the government. Welcome back to World News Tonight and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. A new report from the South Korean Health Authority showed a dramatic decline in the severity of COVID-19 from the so-called Delta wave to the more recent wave of the BA5 variant. But at the same time, the number of very old people dying with the virus each week has more than doubled. Two serious injured people trapped inside a small plane that crashed into high-voltage power lines near Washington, D.C. and caused mass outages have been rescued. China has agreed to restructure Cuban debt and provide new trade and investment credits to the beleaguered Caribbean island nation after a meeting in Beijing between the two communist countries' leaders. The Shengzhou 15 manned spaceship will be launched at 11.08 p.m. on Tuesday, Beijing time, from the Zhiguan Satellite Launch Center in northwest China. It is the sixth flight mission of China's manned space flight program this year and the last one in the construction phase of China's space station. Stocks and oil slid sharply as protests in major Chinese cities raise worries about management of the virus in the world's second largest economy. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index shed 4.16%, China's CSI 300 Index declined 2.22% and the Yuan fell in morning trade. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we had tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Now lit by a tall Christmas tree and filled with dozens of stands with local treats, the Christmas market at the Old Town Square in Estonia's capital opened. We leave you tonight with visuals of the year's Tallinn market, which was chosen as the best Christmas market in Europe in 2019. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.